Hi everyone. So I have some outside work to do this week and I thought I'd take you with me as I do this. It seems so quickly the leaves, you know, started changing and falling. It is always a beautiful time of the year, but gotta say I'm never really looking forward to what comes next with some of the dreary gray days we have here in Ohio during the winter, but don't wanna complain. Every season has its you know benefits and it's always nice to look forward to the spring season then after a long, hard, cold winter. So the first thing I'll be doing here is trimming the hostas that are in the front of the house here. I have a little trimmer here that John recently got for me. It's a Milwaukee brand, and it's similar to the one that I had used last year. I think I had showed you guys one that I borrowed from Marlene. The only difference is I almost kind of preferred Marlene's being that it was lighter. Um, I, I noticed as I started trimming these hostas, my arm got kind of tired or my wrist from holding it. Uh, it is definitely a little bit heavier than the one Marlene had, but It'll work, I think. So I still consider this flower bed here kind of the new flower bed. A couple years ago we had torn out all of the rock garden plants and put in more of an evergreen garden. But in here there's not a lot to do. I do have a few hydrangeas that I want to clip off here. And then up here where the raised bed is at, I'll be taking out the marigolds and the alyssum. Earlier I had removed most of the dusty millers and I also have some gladiolus bulbs that I want to remove. I have some tulip bulbs that I plan to plant in this space. Uh, they are the same ones that I had here last year. And when I removed them this spring, late spring, I put them in buckets and I just left the green part attached to the bulb. That way it would drain, you know, down into the bulb. Um, they say that's what makes it, you know, grow the next year or the following year. And we'll see if that works. Um, I know you can also just leave them out in your flower beds until they're, you know, dried up. But I always don't really like to see them. That's why I removed them. So here to the right of the sidewalk, I'm thinking of trimming down these hydrangeas this year. I don't do it every year, but I'm pretty sure I didn't do it last year, so maybe it's time to do it. It kind of keeps them at bay. They kind of go crazy if I don't. Um, and then I'm also trimming these hostas down.
I went through all of my flower beds, you know, deadheading and trimming, uh, basically just getting things ready for the winter season. And here and there, I'll leave some plants, like dead flowers that have seeds. I always think, you know, the birds will enjoy those come uh, winter time. So I'm eyeballing this flower bed. Um, as you can see, there's hydrangeas, Annabelle hydrangeas on the left side, and there's a big lilac here on the right. And then stuck in between those two is this burning bush that kind of looks out of place and in the way. So I'm thinking of removing it. I think eventually even the hydrangeas would grow into that area some more if they'd have room. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can use my little pole saw to remove it. I could probably get John to help me, but he's not around right now and I kind of want to be rid of it. So I'm going to see if I can do it myself. So I have a wisteria vine that has been growing here and isn't really supposed to. I've tried to remove it for years and it keeps growing back. And it actually grew into the burning bush and then on into the lilac. So hopefully I won't ruin my lilac here by just pulling on it. Might have to just trim some of the branches. So moving down into the garden, John is cutting down the strawberries. Uh, we always mow over them, you know, get them really short and then cover them with straw for the winter season. He also put some straw around the blueberries and the raspberries. He is also applying some mulch to my roses. I have this little rose garden down here and I have plans for it. Hopefully next year I'll get to add some more things into this little space, but I really enjoyed my roses this year. I think they did pretty good for a first year garden and I'm not an expert by any means on roses, so I'm still learning. I can't believe how winter ready this garden looks. Not long ago it was, you know, producing things for us and nice and full. I'm already really excited for next year.
Of course, there's always leaves to be cleaned up around here. We don't stress too much about it as far as thinking we have to you know, clean up weekly. We often just wait until they're, most of them are down and then start cleaning up. Um, I rather like to see it with the leaves down. I think it's very fitting for the fall season. But of course, if it gets too thick, you know, it's not really good for your grass. And especially this year, we had a really dry summer and I feel like some of the grass looks dead to me, but hopefully it'll snap out once we start getting rain. I'm also applying my Sunday lawn care product today. This is the fall treatment. I've talked about them before on here and we've been really impressed with the product. I think our backyard is looking awesome. In fact, I feel like it really took the drought well this summer to think of how dry it was. Now, of course, it doesn't get a whole lot of direct sunshine back here, so that really helps too, but I think it just looks really healthy. And if you are interested in signing up for a 2025 custom lawn plan with Sunday, um, head on over to their website, getsunday.com slash whitecottageco, and you can use Cottage 30 to get 30% off of your custom lawn plan. I love that I'm treating my lawn with products that I can, well, first of all, pronounce. And um, it's just good for all my little critters back here. I'm not applying any you know, harmful chemicals. I picked up a few shrubs for a really good price at Schoenbrunn Landscaping for you locals. Uh, they're from Dilber. I wanted some evergreens for my urns that are at the front of the house by our basement door. And after getting them, I realized the shrubs are actually too large to plant into my present urns. So I ended up picking some other ones up. Actually, John got them for me. Um, they were black and of course, you know, I wanted them like an off-white color. So here he's painting them for me. And we had a really hard time finding the right urns, even minus the color preference. It was just a challenge. I think instead of setting the urns in the flower bed like they were before, like in here, I'm actually going to see how it looks to set them up here on the cement. It's always kind of hard to level things up here in the flower bed. I mean, it would be doable if it doesn't look right up on the cement, but I'm going to try it. I was so impressed to have gotten these two shrubs along with a holly for, I think it was $86 for all three of them. Everything was half price. I love that if I can walk into a greenhouse and prices are slashed like that. And I love this kind of formal English garden look for the front of the house. I think these shrubs will look really good here. When thinking of adding, you know, winter interest to the garden, I like to think of the birds, especially here in Ohio. You know, we get these cold winters. So when I plant anything, I like to consider, you know, what the birds would like. And that's kind of why I got the holly. Um, I wanted to plant it somewhere where I could see it from the house because I feel like it might attract some birds and this would be a good place. And this particular holly is a self-pollinating one, which means I don't need a male and a female in order for it to produce berries. The name is Royal Family Holly. The tag said it's a combination of blue prince and blue princess. So when adding winter interest to the garden, you can definitely think beyond just, you know, planting things. Um, there's, you know, bird baths and bird feeders to be put up and maybe cozy lights to display. And being that I have sort of an empty space here where the burning bush was at, I'm going to put up a bird feeder. I had picked one up in a garage sale years ago and I've just never really used it. And I do have a fence post that I think I can use to set it on. And of course the hard part here on our property is digging the hole. We literally live on rocks so you can't dig a hole without hitting them. I want the post to be white to match the feeder. So here I'm painting it.
here's something mom always did and still does for the birds. Uh, she'll take an old pan that she doesn't have use for anymore in the kitchen and put it out into the ground, like into the flower bed. Um, kind of level it in so it's almost you know level, like the top part of the pan is almost level with your top part of the soil. You place a rock in it and fill it with water and it's amazing how the birds like that. Like it's sort of like a natural little habitat for them. I'm gonna clean up our bird station a bit just by trimming some branches and thorns that are growing up against it. Now birds do like some cover, like every now and then I'll even just make a branch pile, you know, for them kind of behind the feeder because they like to kind of land in there maybe before they go up to the feeder or, you know, after they're finished eating. And it also provides protection in the winter time if it's cold. But they also don't like to have too many branches and stuff, you know, growing up against the feeder. I feel like when they're eating, they want to see around them, make sure there's not a hawk, you know, ready to swoop down and get them, or even a cat, you know, sneaking up to the feeder. So I always like to kind of clear these little branches away for them. Since we're getting shorter days, what is more cozy than seeing some lights twinkling beneath the deck here in this case? Um, I do have some candles that I can put on a timer. And I've used these in previous years and the battery always lasts or the batteries always last a whole season. So I'm always impressed with that. But I love coming home and just seeing a little glow here underneath the deck. I have some old lanterns that I had around here anyway. I'm going to put those to use. So I still have a few things I want to do on the outside before winter is here, including I want to plant some more tulips. You can never plant enough of those. And then I also have some things on the deck that I want to remove or, you know, store for the winter. Um, just odds and ends like that, but I'm pretty much finished. Otherwise, such a good feeling. And hopefully I inspired you to maybe add some things in your gardens or in your outside space for the birds this coming winter season. Um, they will thank you for it, I'm sure. A few things to mention before ending here. First of all, that event is coming up November 23rd. It's at the Heritage Center um, Holiday Experience, and we're going to have a booth there along with many other great vendors. I'd love to meet some of you guys, so mark your calendars if you're all wanting to come to the area November 23rd from 8 to 2. And then the other thing is what I'm smelling beside me here. I wish I could get the scent to you. I know I often say that, but... It smells so good and I'll probably just go ahead and put some pictures on the screen. I can't really show you the best from here, but uh, lots of new soaps here. I don't have lots, I just have some. I didn't get around to making as much soap as I would have liked to, but I do have some here and I'll go ahead and show you what we have. And we do have one scent here that is a second soap. Um, it just didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. I'm still learning guys with the soap making, but. Um, it smells great and it's going to have the same moisturizing benefits as, uh, as all of our other soaps have, but it just has some major glycerin rivers, so it just doesn't look quite as nice, but um, we do have that available as a second soap. So make sure to check that out if you're all wanting to try some of our soaps. So as always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.